All right, so uh, before we have our talks, um, we're going to have a software demo by uh, Stefan Fahnerer on uh, a bijectionist toolkit. So are you? I have a microphone, yes. OK, so thanks for the introduction. Because the software demos are quite short, I thought I'd don't do a live demo about this projections toolkit, but export directly from the Jupyter notebook in which I created it. So this, as you can see, this is something that's running right inside Sage. And if you want to know more about it, you can use these two commands and get the help. Uh, you can see it's joint work with Alexander Gross, Tobias Kietreber, and my supervisor, Martin Rubai. Um, and at some point, we figured out it would be nice to have some nice tool to find projections between two sets A and B that satisfy various constraints. We developed this over the last two years because we had certain applications in mind, and it turned out very nice. So we tried to put it directly into Sage, and we made it in Sage version 10. So you all should upgrade your Sage version, because I know all of us are quite lazy doing this. Um, I had Sage version 8 installed before, so <laughs> install it. It's up there since May this year. And because time is limited, I only give a really baby, baby, baby example. So we'll have two sets, the set of dick paths and the set of non-crossing perfect matchings. And I bet all of you know some bijections between those two sets, but we will find one with our bijectionist. And notice here, A is not the set of dick paths of length 2n, but up to length 2n. And b is the set of non-crossing perfect matchings up to size 2n in this example. And we want to find projections, satisfy constraints. So let's first set up Sage. So we construct these sets a and b. Um, and we set up projectionist with our two sets, projectionist a, b. And we can look at all the possible projections, there are eight elements, we get eight factorial many permutations, so this is far too many to print, but we have a nice way to output, which we call minimal subdistribution. So what the projection is, is trying to do, it will find partitions of A, it will find partitions of B, and it will tell you which blocks you need to map from A to B. So here, because we have no constraints, everything is in one block, everything is in one block, and you know that this block must be mapped to the other block. So let's set some constraints so you can set intertwining uh, statistics. So certainly what we want to do, we want to make this thing graded. So we now want to introduce the length. This is here. We set statistics alpha 1, beta 1 to be the length or the size of the objects. But there's also another one that's equidistributed, which is the area of the dick path. So this is, you look at the number of fully contained one by one squares above the diagonal and below the path. This is the area. And for the non-crossing perfect matchings, we look at the number of nestings. So two arcs are nesting if one is going above the other one. And we set up these constraints and say projectionist dot set statistics, both pairs, and then look at the minimum subdistributions. And then we can already see, okay, the dick path of length 2 is mapped to the only matching of that size. For the dick paths of length 2, because of this area constraint, it found a unique partner. The only thing is, oh, back over there, we still cannot distinguish between those two. Um, so we set some more constraints, which we call intertwining relations. And I guess it's best on an example. So if you have two dick paths, you can compose them. So we have one path. And another path, you can glue them together, get another dick path. You can do something similar with non-crossing perfect matching. So take one matching, you take the other matching, write them next to each other, you get another matching. And you can also set constraints like this. We've just defined the concatenation and then set the intertwining relations. And I'm sorry that the order has now switched a little bit because the output doesn't know in which order they were original. So here we can see, because of this concatenation rule, we now got two extra results, because this thick path here is actually the composition of this one and this one. So you glue them together, and you get the unique result. And the nice thing is with our output, it's very compatible with the 
a combinatorial database called Feinstart. If you don't know that, you should also check that out. It was developed by Christian Stump and also Martin Rubai. And you can take that output and put it right into Feinstart, which has a function to also look for maps, and you get one hit, and that's the projection that we wanted. Okay, so we're actually quite happy with that, but there's actually more that you can do because our original problem that we wanted to solve is we wanted to find a statistic on permutations that's invariant under rotation, but has the same distribution as the length of the longest increasing subsequence. So there's a motivation coming from algebra why we want that. So actually you can have an additional statistic tau on B, like length of longest increasing subsequence, and together with our projection S, we want to find the statistic lowercase s so that S is the statistic value after you apply um, the projection and then tau. And then you can satisfy, uh, say you want to have more constraints like being invariant under rotation, but also quite nice, you can set homomestic constraints and I know that, yeah, Tom Robey already likes that. Um, and in the first example, actually, this was just a special case of this more general setup with the statistic. So if you set C, it can be any set, to be equal to B, and tau to be equal to the identity, you actually immediately get that the statistic smaller, uh, low case S must be capital S. So this more general setup also gives you the way how you can find the projections. Because there's not much time. This is all I want to say. So check it out in, uh, in Sage, and thank you. All right, so we should have time for a couple of questions, if anyone has any. Yes? Okay, it was, the question was about oh, the database of maps. So there's a combinatorial database called Feinstart. It's similar to the online encyclopedia of integer sequences, but for combinatorial statistics and also maps between combinatorial objects. Um, so you should ask Christian how many collections of combinatorial objects are in there, and I think there are 2,000 statistics in there. And if you know some values, how they need to be mapped to each other, you can, like when you know the first values of an integer sequence, you can put the values into the, the online encyclopedia. And similarly, you can put what you know in there, and it will browse this database and will look if there's some hit. So we used it, oh, sorry, wrong direction, backup slides. So in Sage, it's this function called find map, and you put in the output from the projectionist, and it will browse this whole database. So, uh, so what is the upshot of your thing? Did you find the statistic on permutation? So the question was if you found the statistic. Uh, the, the sad part is no, we didn't find it. But the computer allowed us to test up to permutations of size nine. I think it was size nine. So we were convinced that it's true. So we proved then the existence of such a, such a statistic. We didn't find it, but at least the computer helped us to verify or to, to test this conjecture so that we were convinced that we should prove it. Yes, there are, so the question was if we know already which elements are mapped to which one, what, can we also set these? Yes, you can already set that you know that these elements must be mapped to this one. So there, you can directly say, okay, this must be the image of that one, yes. I see there are more questions, I see there are more questions but I think in the interest of time, we need to move on, so uh, feel free to track Stefan down if you have further questions. Let's thank him again.